Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. Today, Art and I are going to review an independent film we saw on Netflix. And the film follows an overweight woman, kind of 30-ish, who sets out to change her life. But really, she sets out to lose weight because she's required by her doctor. She's uh, unhealthy at 30. And change her lifestyle. And she decides that the way to lose weight and change her lifestyle is running. And of course, the ultimate goal being a marathon. Thus, you have the title, Brittany Runs a Marathon. What brings you in today? Uh, I have a hard time focusing. You get enough sleep every night? Drinks on me for this side of the room. How much is enough? Six to eight hours. Oh, way more than that. <laughs> I had a friend. She was prescribed um, Adderall, and now she's very alert. You know, some people abuse Adderall. What? Let's get you healthy. I want you to try losing 55 pounds. That's the weight of a Siberian Husky. Art, what did you think? Well, um, I liked it. Uh, I uh, had no preconception about what this was about. I really didn't. Uh, could have been a sports movie. I thought it might have been a rom-com, and it had those elements in it. But I really saw it as a story of an individual who's unhappy with her life. And yeah. uh, part of it has to do with the fact that she's overweight and out of shape. And um, it, it's her journey. And quite frankly, having been overweight and still am uh, most of my life, although uh, uh, I'm on a great trend right now, I could identify with a lot of what she was thinking about. Although I always had a good self-image. I know a lot of people, men or women, don't if they're overweight. Well, I love being overweight, too. <laughs> <laughs> And I didn't, uh, I didn't relate to this movie as an overweight uh, uh, story at all, really. Mm. My problem is that it's, it's a not movie for me. No. And by that, I mean, I went online, as we often do, to look up something about. We decide we're going to watch this movie together. What is it about? What do other people say about it? Do what's, you know, is it got good ratings or bad ratings? So I had expectations, unlike you, I had expectations that this was a... I think it was billed as a um, comedy sports movie. That was the first thing. And then it was, a, it was they talked about the romance and love. So this was not a comedy, in my mind. It was not a sports movie. And it was not a romance. Now, all of those elements are in there. You know, it's a, it's a comedy. It's a very funny movie. There's a lot of funny scenes in there. But overall... This is a, a serious movie sure. uh, on a serious theme about a, a woman who is really struggling to, I mean, she's 30 and she's still acting like she's 20 and she really needs to change her, her, her whole lifestyle. When the doctor tells her she needs to lose weight, that's the big surprise, but uh, she's going to be really sick if she doesn't. So for me, it was a serious movie, not a comedy, although there are, you know, lots of laughs in there. Uh, it's not a sports movie, even though she decides to run a marathon and it's all about running and learning to run and, you know, all the problems of running and meeting other runners. But it wasn't a sports movie. It's about a woman who's struggling. Uh, yeah, and, and, say, and, and to me, the, the really uh, the really heartwarming part about it all, first of all, the, the, I think we can both agree, perhaps you can't, but I thought the acting was superb. I thought it was really... Yes. These were first-rate performances. Uh, the yeah. characters were believable. But this was somebody who uh, uh, didn't give a shit uh, about herself and what she did. And she was just a great lay. And, you know, because she didn't have much self-esteem uh, for a whole bunch of different reasons. And this was a, uh, if you will, um, a, a little bit of Rudy, a little bit of uh, Rocky, a little bit of yeah. finding herself and and going towards a goal of self-improvement. Yeah. And it wasn't like a three week or three month. It it went for a much longer period of time and somebody who stuck yeah. with it and and uh, how she uh, uh, improved her life. So yeah. I found it pretty inspiring from that standpoint. The, um, the, the script is very good yeah. and it's you're right. It takes us through the ups and downs. I need to remind you that if you're enjoying this video, you should tell us by hitting the like button. and please subscribe. 
Um, it's a very well done, well crafted, dramatic script. Which almost, uh, even even, it's which, got a lot which of like many it. great independent movies, almost never got made. Isn't that the truth? Mm. Yeah. So this movie is is done by. Let me look at the guy's name. It was directed by Paul Colizzo, uh, written and directed by Paul Colizzo, and it stars Gillian Bell. And one of the reasons I was led to believe this might have been a comedy is that Gillian Bell was a writer for Saturday Night Live. She's a member of the Groundlings. She's an actress and mm -hmm. a performer as well as a, a comedy writer. Well, she doesn't do a, the comedy s s acting that you see in a... Tina Fey movie, you know, this is this is a good dramatic movie, and it's got plenty of humor, and it got plenty of love and romance. And I would I would argue with you about the simplicity of the goal of the movie. I think it's a much more sophisticated movie. It mm. really, she this woman is really tackling uh, a question of who she is and who she wants to be. It's not just self image. It's not just weight. She really, at one point, she says, I'm, I'm trying to change my life. And that's really what it's about. And it, it's, I, I was very pleased at the ending. You know, you never know what kind of ending these are going to have. And independent films are often feel like they have to have a, um, oh, I don't know, something from 1960 Italy. It has to have a sad ending, you know. Mm. Uh, but this was, this was a good movie. And I loved it. The, the, uh, the point you made which I want to address for just a second, is that in the, it is an independent movie. It got picked up at Sundance. So the way the filmmakers got this made is they were looking for somebody to underwrite the thing. Along comes Tobey Maguire, famous actor, Spider-Man, well-known, and a couple of friends. They underwrite the movie, and I think, don't quote me on this, they got it made for $7 million. Mm. They all shot in New York, probably over a period of a year or uh, so. By the way, these people all probably traveled in similar circles in and out in New York. So it's like a, a New York mafia of, uh, of professional people. Because I also noticed, and I forgot who it was, but there was an SNL regular who was at the very beginning doing comedy or something. And yeah. uh, I didn't even see his name in the credits. But So it must be a group of people who got together. And then he finally said, you know what, I'll fund this. Um, well, you, I don't know. I, I I don't know enough about Tobey Maguire to know that that's the case. But right. I do know that his he became a, a one of the producers. He and some friends became the producers. Uh, the screenwriter became and and Jillian the the star became the executive producers, whatever that means. Right. And uh, they took it to Sundance. It means they, they they worked for made. scale. If they got paid anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It means they didn't get paid if they're right. executive producers. Right. Um, and they took it to Sundance, and Sundance, at Sundance, I probably won a prize or something, but it got noticed by Netflix, and Netflix picked it up, and I think the, the dollar figure Netflix paid was $14 million. So here are the independent filmmakers doing a film for $7 million, which means the, the guys holding the cameras got paid and nobody else got paid, mm. and they sold it for $14 million. They made some money, you know. They, well, I, think, got, I think we they can got agree. I think we can agree that it was a uh, well acted, well worth the time spent watching it. Yes. Uh, very engaging. A little slow at the beginning, I thought, but uh, the the performances were engaging enough that it kept you there. And then all of a sudden, you'd start warming up to some of the characters who were empathizing with them, and it was really yeah. well acted. Uh, yeah. I, by the way, getting back to your point, uh, and for anybody in our audience who just likes a, a, a film well made, Million Dollar Baby, even by Eastwood, that didn't, he was playing around with that for 10 years to get the proper funding. Who yeah. wanted to do it about a woman boxer who's getting beaten up and right. who dies at the end, you know? And, <laughs> right. Uh, so the, it's not unusual, but so this is one of the cases of the little engine that could, that did. Yeah. It, yeah. And it might never have seen the light of day, and it would have been a shame. And uh, it's a nice, dramatic uh, profile for an interesting character. It's a character study, is what it right. is for me. Yeah. You know, so you know, I, we recommend it. We both yeah, recommend it. We should ask for our different audience reasons. to, you know, like Siskel and Ebert had like two thumbs up, you know. Yeah. Uh, we need something like that. Like, um, Oh, okay. Uh, uh, you pick your nose, I'll pick my ear. What, what, what do we need? I, no, I don't think so, Mark. No. I don't think so. 
Yeah. Uh, but we need to, you we like need to come up with something too. unique so that we go viral. So if anybody out there has something that we can say about if we like something and don't like something, you know, like... Uh, not balloons. I don't. I don't, we, don't we can have balloons, I guess, in, in post production in there or something. Uh, but so if you have some. But anyway, if we were given a thumbs, this definitely got thumbs up. <laughs> I think. What about you, John? Yeah, yeah, we would. Yes. Okay, go watch it. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our web page. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.